I Am Safe Zone has three different interactive activities that you can do as a group. You could do a solo study, or you can even keep watching them until you feel comfortable and take it as a training of the trainer course. Once you feel confident facilitating these conversations, please feel free. Start up these conversations anywhere and everywhere. It's really, really important. It's important that we understand who we are, who we're working with, and how we can best support and advocate for any subordinated or marginalized person that we have access to. I am so glad I came to this particular institute. I had never seen Jessica present. I do know of her, but she is an incredible content expert. Plus her style of humor and using herself as examples, it really, um, it not only educates, it entertains, it opens us up, it's confrontive at the same time it's gentle and affirming. So I've learned a tremendous amount about the GLBT community, of which I am a member. It's one of Jessica's points that we don't even know enough about ourselves. And the intersection with privilege is perfect. What I like about this activity is it doesn't hold anybody responsible for what is reported. So around the room we have gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, heterosexual, and straight. In no particular order, if that's the order, I taped them up. What I want you to do in your group is I want you to record anything that comes up for you under that particular word, right? So this might be people, adjectives, nouns, nicknames, slurs. It can be anything you want it to be. What I am going to do is we're going to look at the list collectively so that eventually we can dismantle what is actually in our heads, no matter how well-intentioned we are. What is phenomenal about this activity is that I have done it all around the country. I've done it with middle schoolers. I've done it with presidents of colleges. And the exact same things show up. It is about what is in our collective culture. Heterosexual and straight. We have allies, normal, vanilla, privileged, ignorant, good, the right way, majority, judgmental, breeders, parents, marriage, traditional husbands and wives, right, Christian, holier than thou, narrow, default, and boring. So for fun, talk to me about breeder. In my experience, straight people do not understand what this means. Breeder typically shows up because not straight people have a negative term for straight people. Ultimately, that's what it means. Straight people do not know this. The reason you do not know this is because it is about you, right? <laughs> so if a subordinated group is making up a name about the dominant group, we don't really put that on bumper stickers and say, hey, guess what? This is what we're calling you these days, right? However, if a dominant group makes up a name about a subordinated group, we put that shit on t-shirts, right? Like that's all over the place. So we know those words. So it's important to kind of pay attention to even how that fits in with slurs. The more people who learn about I Am Safe Zone, the more likely these conversations will start in all different kinds of pockets all around our country, whether it's at our desks, or in our classrooms, in our squad cars, in our own trainings, in our personal relationships. Gay, we have girly, feminine, artistic, drugs and alcohol, white, destructive to society, child molester, queen, fudge packer, dyke, power, rich, men, butt pirate, fag or faggot, flamer, hairdresser, interior designer, pretty, party boy, and well-groomed. Fudge packer, that would be black group. I put that one. <laughs> now we know who the problem child is. <laughs> okay, what's a fudge packer? Anal sex. Okay, and who made up the derogatory term? Straight people. Probably, right? I would, I would hazard to guess there might even be some people within the gay community who have either made this up or used this term in a positive or a negative way. So we have dyke, carpet muncher, lesbo, women with a Y, loving women with a Y, commodified, butch, flannel, bull dagger, lezzy, beaver, Ellen, narcissistic, man-hater, polyamorous, loose, Needs a good man, feminist, feminazi, loving, compassionate, passionate, the L word, and manly. Why, why does Ellen always show up on the lesbian sheet? She's cute. What else? She's white. She's rich. She came out publicly. 
there's some tokenization that's happened as well, right? And I would just say that she's even been pretty open about the pressure of that, yeah. right? You said she's funny? Yeah, she's funny. She's approachable. She makes it more, for a lot of folks, makes being a lesbian more palatable. Mm -hmm. She's not threatening. Not threatening. I would even say that there's an interesting turn, right? Is that she was a cover girl spokesmodel. That's kind of a big deal. Now she's a JCPenney spokesmodel. That's not even makeup, right? Like that could be a lawnmower, right? Now we're back to our people, right? Do you see? <laughs> Do you see? If you are purchasing I Am Safe Zone, what you'll end up getting is a DVD box set of three interactive programs, the facilitator guides, as well as a resource disc. The resource disc links to a website where as many assessment tools, articles, resources, information, interviews, etc. I have access to, I'll constantly be updating it. So we ended up coming up with this model and it is the most effective way I have found to talk about sex, gender, sexual identity, sexism and heterosexism regardless of the knowledge level in the room? Um, I think I learned most about myself. Um, I think that through this program, I really learned kind of where I was and kind of where I've become and kind of been able to see that dynamic. Um, I still have a lot to go, but I, through this, I've kind of learned that I've made progress in, in the right direction. We have sex, gender, sexual identity. What I want to do in this particular activity is I want to provide a space for you to see how we conflate these things together and how that actually supports systems of oppression. And if we can pull them apart and understand how they're separate, then it'll be much more easier, much more easily identifiable where we're policing ourselves and other people's behaviors. Right? So give me some example of secondary sex characteristics, if you know what I'm talking about. Adam's apple? Facial hair or beard? Breasts? Size? Proportion? Voice? Where your fat is stored? So if you have like these things, right? I'm groping myself. You probably identified me as a woman when you walked in. So then you identified these things as breasts. Yay. Thumbs up. You were correct, right? But if you identified me as a man and I have fat stored here, then you're going to interpret those as man boobs. Very different socially. Yes? Breasts, man boobs. Mmm. Bikinis. Mmm. Really, maybe a sweater. Right? So how we interpret fat has a gendered meaning. So with the resource disk and the three interactive activities, you should be able to not only do a home study for your own education, Maybe hold a space or host a educational program with people that you work with or have access to, but you'll be able to have these conversations in a confident way. So the consultant came back in 1712 with this idea. And the idea is, is that if you can pit the slaves against each other, if you can pit them against each other, they will be so busy arguing with each other and within each other that the only person they can turn to or trust is the person outside of the argument. And the person outside of the argument is the slave owner. If you can create a system where your slaves thank you for being the slave owner, the hypothesis was that this would last for 300 years. It's 2012. If we can collectively realize who we are pitting ourselves against, who we're arguing with, and who we're thanking, then we can at least get a handle on the actual system that needs to be dismantled. to actually building bridges and having authentic conversations starts, begins, ends, continues, maintains with knowing who you are and where you are within particular identities and spaces and time. You're gonna have a conversation in your own head, not necessarily witnessed by anybody else in this room, but I want you to really think about who are you and where are you coming from what are you bringing to the table and who are you kicking out from the table? Because we all actively are doing that. That's what we have to stop. My hope is that by coming to this, I'll learn something about how to continue to raise the question, 
how can we continue to say we're for all families when we're really only focused on this particular segment of family and it looks like same-sex couple headed family, white, um, fairly well off, and how do we expand and expand some of our resources and our privilege to support families of color, regardless of um, how people identify within that family. So that's, that's one reason I'm, big reason why I'm at this particular workshop. So move your chairs, pair up, use the space, enjoy yourself. So talk about whatever you need to talk about. Introduce yourself. That's the whole point of authentic conversation. What was easy and what was hard in, in coming up with your bookmarks? That's pretty open-ended. How does it feel, the process of actually noting specifically and staying to sexual identity and sexual orientation, how did it feel to navigate that process? Why is it important to do this? And how can you do it more? This is your chance. Welcome to Authentic Dialogue. The idea being that if we can talk about power and privilege both in and outside of dominant and subordinated groups, then we're actually stronger, more prepared allies. I Am Safe Zone has three different interactive activities that you can do as a group. You could do a solo study. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your support and I appreciate your interest in really being an ally within the LGBT community and bridging the gaps of difference. Thank you. I am, I am.